Yo, what's up, man? It's Jordan Lucas. Make sure y'all check me out on the Bootleg Cab Podcast, you heard? Hey, what up, man? Before we start the interview, want to shout out to Imperial Extraction. Look, man, they got these two gram THCA diamond loaded pre rolls and uh, so much more. They got the carts, they got everything going down, and you can get 20% off right now if you go to Imperial Extraction. Dot com. That's imperialextraction.com, but you got to use the promo code BOOTLEG20. This is that Yoda OG. Premium, 20% off, sent right to your door. THCA diamond loaded pre-rolls and so much more. Imperialextraction.com, promo code BOOTLEG20. Let's get to the interview. Yo, Bootleg Kev Show, man. Special guest in here. His new album is out, and I'm going to say it officially, in my opinion, a lot of other albums have been getting talked about, but for my money, this man has the album of the year so far. Join Lucas. My nigga. Welcome, I'm, sir. What's up, G? Hey, I got to start the interview off because I watched your Breakfast Club interview and there's tons of pauses, so we got to kick it off with a nice pause moment. If we go to Worcester, are we going to get glizzies at the Coney Island? <laughs> I, I heard if we go, we got to get some glizzies. Is this a fact? It's a big pause. Yeah, Coney Island go crazy. Oh, all right. Coney Island go crazy. Shout out to Coney Island for sure. For sure, man. Mm -hmm. um, but yo, welcome, dude. Uh, like I said, the body of work is crazy. I know, obviously, you've been dropping like videos and singles, it feels like, for about a year now that are connected to this body of work. When was the first? Was like, it nine months ago you yeah, dropped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, about nine months ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to say, man, like, there's two moments from this project that got me like hella emotional. So Simba and me are really close friends, and he played me the DMX record like maybe three months ago. Mm -hmm. And that shit had me choked up, man. Like, that DMX moment is, like, crazy. Like, Thank you, bro. To hear it, like, mm -hmm. for you, like, when you listen to a song like that, and it's, it, it feels like this is kind of, like, the last real X feature we might get. You know what I'm saying? Because I know he's got a lot of, like, verses floating around. No, nah, there's another one. You got one. I know mm -hmm. you have another one. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, the stuff that, like, I feel like we hear is, like, people buying verses and shit. You got a real relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Like, when you like listen back to that, like at, like I'm did you have you already had that verse obviously at, mm -hmm. before he passed? Mm -hmm. Like did you get emotional like hearing the final product? Well, um, like the please don't it, let like, me it hits go. A shit. Bit, it hits it hits a, it hits a little bit different now that he's gone. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it do it hit different for sure, man. Yeah. Um, and then obviously this Jelly Roll record is, is just crazy for anybody. Like I've dealt with a lot of family members who've been uh, addicts. Mm -hmm. You know, my son's mom was. A big drug addict so i that's, that, that second verse was crazy that's tough yeah yeah i know you said that you kind of feel like you get like channeled when you write certain verses from different perspectives did mm -hmm. you ever deal with any actual like people close to you yeah there's a lot of within all my records they're, they're coming from somewhere right it's like um you know if i'm not experiencing it directly then it's you know someone that i know personally that experienced it you know and um but yeah that 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 record was a little bit personal for sure because i have i have um <clears throat> someone if you hear it, it sound like a letter just like a for sure like i'm talking to someone that's uh, try to help them lift their spirits up you know what i mean and and get them out of the slum at the end how yeah. long um did your relationship go back with jelly because you know obviously everyone's just kind of getting hip to jelly roll but he's been like an underground rapper for yeah i wasn't really i was hip to jelly but back when he was rapping right um for sure but um you know, he's he's definitely um, throughout the years, you know, have grown. Pause, and this record just it just made sense to put him on it because he was, you know, he really advocates for for sure. That's you know, like his mission. Yeah, it's 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 his mission for sure. Um, so it just made the most sense to put him on the record, you know, and. You know, when he heard it, you know, he got goosebumps and he was like, bro, this is this one's this is going to be the Grammy right here. For you sure. Know? And if yeah. like the VMAs would ever get their shit together, you'd have like 50 by now. Yeah, I mean, it's a, I was just telling them that telling them that on a bus, like how I just feel like I'd be slighted. It's crazy. You like know? you got like yes. probably the best music videos, like times 20 over the last decade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like did we did we get um, music video? Or was it music video for I'm Not Racist? It was it was music video, right? For Grammy, it wasn't song, music video. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You have classic videos at this point over and over. But that was but, but that was. That felt good. Of pause, course. Pause. Get some McNaught. You know, yeah. You're a pauser, man. 
Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yo, last night you were hanging out with Rihanna and uh, Cardi mm. B and Jason Lee. Mm-hmm. And was mm-hmm. Paris Hilton there? Paris was sitting right next to me. Nice. She's dope. She, hey man, she the she started all this reality she shit. She is dope, bro. She's a dope person. Like she's she's got a really dope personality. Was that your first time like meeting her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. She's a, she's she's like. She's a, she's just a dope person, bro. She was before, yeah. her, before her time. Can you imagine if Paris Hilton would have dropped like? TikTok wave, like yeah, 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 yeah. She's like the first, like, you know what I mean, the first person to really do that, that live. For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, she's she's fire, man. Like for sure. I had heard you had like uh, uh, some previous conversations with with Riri. Did she reach out to you when I'm not racist went yeah. crazy? Yeah, like I've I, I I built a friendship with Riri. Like Riri, when um I'm not racist that you know came out. You know she was one of the first people to like really hit me up and like repost it and like. You know, um, and we built like a really dope friendship. You know what I mean? And um, she's she's such a she she really loves the culture of of you know like real like hip hop and, and meaningful music. You know what I mean? So when I drop, sometimes she'll just be like, you know, she did it with Devil's Work. Like yo, send me that. You know, right. like text send me that and i'll send it to her and then she'll just post it and she'll just be like, yo, this shit needs to be seen. Like she she really wanna. You know what I mean? Like, show love for real. And, like, I really fuck with her for that. And, you know, seeing her yesterday was like seeing a homie. You know right, what I mean? Right, 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 right. Like, she, she's a dope person. You got to get, get get a record one day when she's super active in the music again. Because I feel like she comes yeah. and goes. You know what I mean? Like, one yeah. day. She's a, her, she's a mother, you know? For and sure. It's like and a billionaire. And, and a billionaire. But she's, you know, she got the Fenty popping. Shout for out to sure. Fenty. And she's a mom, you know? And she's married. And, you know, she's she's just... You know, she's living a different life now, so I don't really know if her head is in the music like that, you know? And it's right. like, she's gave us years and years worth of music. And amazing classic music, by the way. So, shout out to Ree. Speaking of so, classics, I feel like you've had, like, such a yeah. interesting path to where you are now. Because, like, I first got hip to you with the 508 album, which was, what, like, 2017? hmm Keep It 100 was crazy. mm mm-hmm. um, And I feel like throughout the years, you've, like been about as anti-industry as you could be for somebody who's as big as you are. Pause. Is that... Yeah. So. You're going to have some hard pauses with me. I mean, and I know you've been through a lot in the industry too, um, but was that is that always kind of been like on purpose? Because you have a very tight team. You, you've, you've moved your own way mm-hmm. your entire career. Mm-hmm. You've been through the major label shit. You've been through the indie shit. You know what I mean? Like, has that always kind of been a part of the plan or did it just work out that way to just be like anti like, you're just you write your, you're writing your own shit you're almost like you, you know like i look at guys like you i look at guys like russ like you guys just write your own rules to this rap shit mm-hmm. there's no like you know a lot of people just go by the blueprint they drop a single they work the single if it don't work out they drop another single right but it's like bro that shit is like even if you look at the song structure on a lot of my shit like like you said, it's just breaking all the rules. There's, yeah, no, there's, there's not hooks. There's no on, hooks on a lot of this shit. There's no hooks on ISIS. And right. There's no hooks on, like, a lot Broski, of these records. Yeah. Broski. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if, um, what, what record didn't, what record, what other big, big record? Huh? Sticks and Stones is hard yeah, as Sticks fuck. and Stones didn't, didn't have a, um, a hook Shout on to it. Conway. Broski, no mm-hmm. hook. Any of the storytelling records really don't be having hooks, except for, like, Best For Me that has a hook. Um, I didn't go. Yeah. But X didn't really have a hook. So right. it's like, I don't really care about following song structure or like how things go. It's like, I just want to do what I want to do. And it feels good to do what I want to do and not be told what to do, you know? And then yeah. talk about your app too, because your app is like, for people who don't know, like you got an app that's very unique because there's apps out there where you can like upload your music. Obviously there's mm-hmm. the distro kids and the tune cores and all mm-hmm. that. But your app also provides like, contract templates like just different shit yeah if you're an independent artist then maybe you don't have the means or the resources to like know someone or a music lawyer or stuff like that like, like if i had tully like you know when i really needed it when i was coming up and like i didn't really you know know what things was and i didn't really know about certain shit right. like you know tully would have came in clutch especially the opportunities on there you know what i mean with the different features and shit that we were doing like um you know it really is like a a central place for you know artists to have you know to store all their assets in there you know and to you know read i mean to write record 
um, listen to the beat all on a single screen. Oh, that's crazy. You know, um, I was doing it off of like three different phones. Like I was listening to a beat off of this phone and I was writing off of this one and then recording like, because I would record like vo- voice, voice notes, notes yeah. so I can remember like, um, but we got, I, we had gotten patented so that we can be able to do that all in a single screen, you know what I mean? Which was pretty dope. And then you, I can write a song with you from a like a remote location. Me and you could be in a different location writing to the same song, shit like that. The loop function on there. So like, if you sent me a record with like an open sixteen, you can I can loop the, loop the p- part that, that part. I want and write. All oh, this is dope, bro. And it's like when you think about like, there's no, there's never been like a pre-production tool for an artist to. You know, have I mean, directors have what like uh, Final Cut okay. to have their own Premier shit, right? And that, yeah. Right, and then you got Microsoft for like mm-hmm. you know Office and Microsoft Word and Microsoft right. this. You know, the engineers they have Pro Tools. You know, producers have right. Fruity Loops. You know, that there's something for everyone except for artists. You know, so I wanted to be the first one to create something that artists can use as a pre-production tool. Hey, we gotta stop the interview to tell you about our good folks at Blue Chew, baby. Everybody always asking me, does Blue Chew work? Yes, it'll have your dick hard. As fuck. Uh, Super hard. Uh, Anyway, um, so look, if you want to find out if Blue Chew works, trust me when I tell you it's amazing. If you're dealing with erectile dysfunction, if you're dealing with maybe some stress at work and you're not performing in bed with your lady, whatever it is, man, all you got to do is go to bluechew.com right now. Use the promo code bootleg and they're going to send you a month supply for free. So don't take my word for it. They're just going to send you a month supply for free. When you use the promo code bootleg at bluechew.com. Now, Blue Chew, if y'all don't know, it's the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis, but it's in a chewable form, and it gets delivered right to your doorstep in discreet packaging. The best thing about Blue Chew is this, right? Blue Chew, you don't have to worry about going to no doctor's appointments. You don't got to worry about none of that. It's all online. It's not. It's all virtual. It's all online. It's all handled at bluechew.com. So use that promo code bootleg right now. Get... T- uh, a month for free, uh, and uh, your dick could be as hard as ever. Yes. And nobody, uh, well, nobody enjoys a hard dick like Cyrus, my producer right here. Uh, speaking of that, hey, can we give a shout out to King Palm? Oh, my God. Look at all this King Palm we have here. Jesus. This is why I love King Palm. Whatever you're into, they got for you. First of all, King Palm, 100% organic. All right? It's the world's best smokable leaf. Yes, flavors on flavors on flavors. Of course, here we've got our banana cream. Um, what's dope about these is they're filled with the terpene, no tobacco, no nicotine. Uh, you squeeze the tip, you get hit with some of that uh, banana cream flavor. Uh, they also got the natural joints right here. How about this? If you're into the uh, more uh, harsh tobacco leaf smoking, there we go. They got the tobacco leaf cones, banana cream, strawberry kiwi. Just the natural sweet. Whatever you're into, what I'm trying to tell you is King Palms got it at the highest level, at the most natural level, at the best smokeability level. And right now, you can save 50% off. It's 50, right? Yeah, it's half off. If you go to King Palm right now, kingpalm.com, use the promo code bootleg, you'll get half off. Or you could just go to your local smoke shop, your local 7-Eleven, and get you some King Palms. Let's get back to the interview. Did you like... Hit up any other rapper homies and say, hey, I'm working on this. What do you think I should include? Or what's missing? This is the this is what we got so far. What's missing? Um, no. You kind we of, pretty much kept yeah. like we pretty much like just used me as a case study and we already knew what was missing. Right. You know, we already seen that a lot of these niggas don't know, you know, what their splits are on certain records. They don't know certain shit. So we were like, yeah, we gotta add that. You know? For sure. You know, contracts and shit like that. We got to add that copyright in this shit. We got to add that. Because there's like the small shit. Like if you're an independent artist and like you buy a beat from somebody. Yeah. Like if I'm just like, uh, you know, a new rapper, I don't know what a production agreement looks like. Yeah. Or how to make sure like this producer can't come back later and be like, nah, I sold this twice. Uh Uh-huh. And, um, you know, getting that shit off the ground was completely self-funded until Sony stepped in and, you know, they gave us a big bag and then... You know, now they're our partners in there. and That's big, you bro. know. It paused, yeah, for sure. See, there we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yo, uh, talk to me about, uh, you know, you have been, I mean, look, you've had, like I said, a storied career. I feel like you have fans that have been fucking with you the whole time. You have fans who discovered you through, like, Tech 9 You have fans who discovered you through, like, Eminem. You got, mm-hmm. you know, fans who... 
the first time they ever heard of you was Will. Like, you know, you have all these new fans, but you got like, your fans are very, very dedicated. Like they're a very uh, dedicated bunch, we'll say. Um, do you ever feel like, because I've heard you kind of talk about like when you do a record like a guy like Future, like do, is, is it kind of hard to like get over always having to try to think about like making your like diehard fans happy while also trying to figure out how to like expand the reach? Absolutely. Like that's like one of the things because I really care about the core, you know, and it's like I don't want to turn off the core and like make them like. No, they change your life. A hundred percent. So it's like it's because I care about about the core, you know, it's like I worry sometimes that they're not really going to understand like, you know, what I'm trying to do musically, you know, and it's like um, as far as like me experimenting with like different things it's like i actually am a fan of like future records you know i'm a fan of nba like i'm a fan of a lot of that realm that they may not be fans of you know so when i step outside of that and collab with those people you know sometimes my fans are like what the fuck are you doing you know mm. but it's like um i'm just really open-minded and like um it's really just me being experimental and trying new shit but i think that it's like having the balance of like mm. putting your world into their world and like doing it like with within reason and not just going too far left field and like right. you know becoming too excited pause and then um going too f- come on bro yeah <laughs> yeah niggas man. going to going too far into their into their world you right. know what i'm saying that really just like yeah. What's well, interesting too, because I always I always think back to like yeah. uh, when I was growing up, how big of a deal it was that Kanye got Talib Kweli and Freeway on a song together. Do mm-hmm. you remember when when that happened and people mm-hmm. were like, "Yo, mm-hmm. Kanye's bringing the backpack and the mainstream." He shit brought together. a lot of shit together, bro. But if you think about it, like fast forward, like Freeway and Talib Kweli on a song together is not that crazy. Like, mm-hmm. and when Jay Z said, you know. Uh, I be I be rhyming a lot more like common sense, you know, lyrically. I be Talib Kweli. It's crazy because, like, back then, I feel like hip hop was more segregated. But nowadays, I feel like I feel like it's natural for like, like, like the record you did with Young Boy. I don't think I think he came to your world on that right. record. So, but that, but that was one of the ones that was like, um, I, I did the future one. Mm-hmm. I even got one. Where I got a joint with Kodak Black. You know what I'm saying? Hard. And the little baby record was like the Kodak fire. Black one goes stupid. Like I love the Kodak Black one, but I just I didn't put it on this project. You know, I'm right. probably gonna throw it on my next joint. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but I felt like there was too many records on this project that was like a little bit left field. And it was like Well, you had scrapped like the previous idea for this album. Yeah. So there's probably like a folder just full of shit that we'll never hear. A whole bunch of features from yeah. a whole bunch of different types of artists that I'm a fan of. Right. But I just felt like it was going too far down of of a direction that I I stopped feeling comfortable with because it was like I don't ever want to just create something that's just for now, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's just like I like my shit to live forever. Can you walk me through um, the one thing that I love in hip hop is like when two top tier MCs battle, and you and Tory Lanez had a fun uh-huh. a fun time. Mm-hmm. You guys were and you guys were hitting each other back pa- pause. quick. Pause, Jesus Super Christ! Super pause, super pa- pause. pause. Hey yo, but when you guys yeah. had that going on, like <laughs> yo, you guys were turning around records hella quick about each other, and no. it was very like it felt like obviously you guys were talking shit to each other, but it just felt like this is for the sport type shit. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like you know, he's a funny guy. You know, I was just talking about this on a Million Dollars Worth of Game. Like he's a funny dude, and like. You know, because he's a funny guy, and like, you know, it was it it it, it was more sporty than anything. You know, me mm-hmm. and him, don't, we didn't really know each other to right. have a real problem. You know, but he he's a competitive guy. You know, and um, he said some shit, and it was just like, you know, that was that it was like I I, I gotta show this nigga because he doesn't know. You know, it's like you guys sharpened each other's swords for like a month. Paul, super pause. Hey, bro, I can't say shit to this guy without a pause. Well, that was crazy. <laughs> See, <laughs> sharpening each other's swords is crazy. But go ahead. No, I was gonna ask you. Um <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yo, that was that was crazy. lyrical swords, okay, yo. obviously. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> that was crazy. Uh how excited yeah. cause cause I'm not sure yeah. just a, mm. a, from a hip hop fan's perspective, because you're obviously a hip hop head. Um what was I mean, look, the night that you released your album, Kendrick Lamar disses the other two big three. Mm-hmm. 
you dropped a, you dropped an album. Big Sean dropped a single, and it, it, then there's this Kendrick verse that just takes over the world. Mm-hmm. What were your initial thoughts when you heard the verse? Because the it's an amazing verse, and I'm I'm not as excited because I don't think Drake's gonna reply. I'm really excited to see what J Cole says. But what were your thoughts, just from a fan's perspective? This motherfucker. Like why today? This why not next week? This motherfucker waited till today. Yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker waited till today to do this shit. <laughs> Right, but no, nah, I'm actually a fan. Like I fuck with Kendrick. I'm a fan of Kendrick. Um, Has he ever tapped in? Pause. <laughs> it's like, Are we pausing that? Yeah, but Yo, listen, but you, you and I couldn't hang out too much because yeah. you would be. I'm fucked up over here. Yeah. Has he tapped in? It's crazy, but nah, he. I I haven't talked to him, but he's. Um. He's somebody that I think is fire, you know. Right. And it's like, I know he's aware of me, you know. We have we've of course the he's, same, yeah. He's got, some, yeah. We have a we work with a lot of the same people, so of course. producers and shit like that. So, but um, yeah, he's fire. Yeah, I fuck with Kendrick. When he dropped it, though, I'm definitely like, God damn, nigga, why today you do this shit? You know, There's I didn't a, really give a fuck about what Big Sean dropped too much. Like, I didn't, that didn't that, that didn't really bother me. There's a fucking fly just yeah. floating in front of you. Yeah. Um. What the. F- yeah, I, I think uh, it's a, it's just it was just an interesting time to drop. I was like, damn, because you know Big Sean's always talk about he's like the fourth guy in the big three, and it's like, bro, he, he, Big Sean said that. He's I feel like that's always kind of been like an interesting perspective, like you know in the in the blog era rap scene. Like, well, you know what is a Big Sean like at that time? Like he's has the time, right? Like he's around or he's made like a lot of big records. The Big Sean's fire, but he's I was saying this on the Breakfast Club. It's like. These guys have been in the game for like like Kendrick, Big Sean, you, Drake. Sure. Yeah. They all came like up, pause at the same time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like they were all peers. You're kind of like right, right after them. I'm right after them. So that's this is why he feels like he should be included in that conversation. You know, like he could, but he took a lot of time off too. You know, he just stopped. You know what I mean? Like completely. Has there mm-hmm. been a concept for a record mm-hmm. that because you have some crazy like joints bro like i feel like you know i mean i heard you talk about it sometimes you'll come up with a visual before you even figure out the song and it, and 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 it's it's like a real like piece of art that's like a standalone piece of art between the music video and the and the, and the record but has there ever been a concept that you came up with that you had to scrap because you thought it was a little too controversial hell yeah well not controversial but just like i've had i've had records that i've had to scrap all the time just because i felt like they just weren't like the people weren't ready yeah, people weren't ready. Yeah, like I, or not, they weren't ready. But the it, the record just didn't come out the way that I thought it was gonna come out. Right. You know, that's fair. All right, we got to stop the interview to tell you about the good folks at my bookie, man. Now look, NBA playoffs are approaching. Whew. March Madness is in full effect. What are we talking about? Get in on the action at mybookie.ag. That's right. All right. If you want to bet on who you think is going to, um, you know, win the national championship in basketball, college basketball, on the women's side, on the men's side, man, so many specials going on. Go to mybookie.ag right now. Sign up for a new account, and they're going to get you hooked up with that first deposit bonus when you use the promo code bootleg. That's right. Mybookie.ag. Use the promo code bootleg. Sign up for a new account, and you're going to get a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. What are we talking about? Playoff basketball, March Madness. People are playing hockey. I don't know why. Terrible sport to watch. Baseball season is approaching. Let's fucking get it, boys. Let's throw some action in. Let's get in on that action. Let's get a little taste in there. Plus the full service casino. Man, blackjack, craps, fucking roulette. Whatever the fuck you want to play, they got it at my bookie. Promo code bootleg. Sign up for a new account. Thank me later when you get in all that money. You know what I'm talking about? Also want to give a shout out. For our good folks at Odd Socks. You know, Odd Socks has a bunch of socks. I don't have any with me right now. But, you know, Cyrus is over here jerking his fucking cock over here with his blue chew that he just popped. He just fucking snorted a blue chew like a psychopath. Um, but shout out to Odd Socks, man. Look, this was dope, man. WrestleMania is coming up. I got all my wrestling socks from Odd Socks. They got the WWE license. OddSocksOfficial.com. That's right. Go to OddSocksOfficial.com. They are the most comfortable socks in the world. I just have underwear here. Yo, wait, we got drawers, no socks. We got fucking 38 drawers full of socks and Cyrus can't pull. Anyway, listen, if you've been watching the Bootleg Kev podcast in your life, bro, you just spilled my fucking energy drink. You fucking cunt. Didn't know your energy drink was there. You got a serious cleanup job here, Cyrus. Anyway, 
Well, I'm getting fucking bombarded with socks. If you've been watching the Bootleg Kept podcast, we love odd socks. They are family. And when I tell you I only wear odd socks, like, like I'm about to take the sock off of my foot right now. Ugh. This is an odd socks basic. You see that? I'm barefoot right now. The most comfortable sock in the world. I invite everybody. Just fucking throwing shit like a psychopath, bro. I invite everybody to go to oddsocksofficial.com and participate in a level of comfort you did not know existed before. All right? So go to oddsocksofficial.com. Use the promo code bootleg. Save 20% at checkout. I suggest you get you some wrestling socks. Get you some, uh, some transformer socks. Maybe some half-baked socks. Yeah, let's get back to the interview. It's important to be self-aware. On Sticks and Stones, you say that you think about quitting rap a lot. Uh, I feel like it's got to be a hard thing to want to leave if you love it. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, me saying that was really just... I've been making music for a long time. Before we knew who you Before were. Before you knew who I was, right. you know? So it's like, to, for y'all, it's like... I just got here a couple years ago, but it's like for me, I've been doing, I've been making music. I was like seven, eight, bro. I've been, right. You know, so it's been, it's been a long time since I've been, you know, creative. Yeah, I mean, for sure. years. So for you, is there like a, because at the end of the day, like with this rap shit, I feel like everyone kind of has, like, hits a wall, like when it comes to like, but I'm sure, especially for you, like it's got to be like mentally exhausting because you're so, like, your shit ain't just like, yo, let's go grab a camera and hit the liquor store. The Sticks and Stones video was the most normal video rap video I've ever seen you shoot. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you were yeah. just walking through Times Square. But I think sometimes but it's necessary. But it was necessary. perfect because it's a Conway it's record. It's necessary, yes. bro. It's like sometimes it's like going above and beyond and OD, trying to, like, do too much and trying to, like, you know, every video has to be a masterpiece. It's, like, crazy. It's like sometimes I just, like, I want to chill. Sometimes I want to just walk around and do some simple shit. Sometimes, you know, it's like I don't. And I don't ever want people to, like, get too comfortable with me always making this, like, huge music video splash. Right. You know, it's like sometimes I just want to just do shit. Like, that's not that, you right. know. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to me about, uh, obviously, you've been in a couple of movies now. Bad Boys 4, the trailer dropped. Did this, is this a direct uh, result of manis- manifestation for you? Because the Hell real yeah. video. Hell yeah. I got Will's yeah. book down there. Shout out to Will. It's down there. He's a legend. Amazing man. book, by the way. Hell yeah, yeah, for sure. Great book. I was gonna I say, mean, like, yeah, explain to me just how all of that. How obviously he sees the video. Yeah, manifestation for sure. That's that's really what that was, you know. Just me, like, um, wanting to create a record for somebody who's like that I look up to. You know what I mean? I don't feel like just get the respect that he deserved. Like, even as a on a music tip, you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, for sure, like, on the music tip. So first rapper to win a Grammy. First rapper to ever win a Grammy, mm-hmm. like. So I just felt like he didn't get the respect. He don't get the respect that he deserves. So it's like, you know, I wanted to make a record where I'm like really just giving him his flowers. You know what I mean? And and I, me and me and um, my manager had a bet. Like when we put it up, how long it was going to take for him to see it and respond. I said it was going to take a couple of days. He was like, Nah, he's going to hit. It. He's going to respond in, within hours, right? And I'm like, Nah, this is like my hero. Like so, I'm like, This nigga ain't about to respond. Right. It took like one hour, two hours. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? That nigga hopped on the net, like, yo, join her. Like, yo, this shit crazy. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, that shit. You crazy. go from playing um, him in, a, in, uh, in the video to being yeah. in part four of the movie. T- to not just being in the movie, but also like really having, you know, him as a real life mentor. You right. know what I'm saying? Where he's like an older brother for sure. Like, I talk to him a lot. You know, we make me in the studio together. Like, we. Like he's somebody I go to his house. Like he's he's a phenom- he's just he's the nigga, bro. Well he's like mm-hmm. also like for as famous as he is, like yeah. strangely transparent and vulnerable as a man. You know what I'm saying? Which 100%. I think is important. 100%. Like, what is has there been any piece of advice that you've been able to kind of apply to your personal life or to your career that he's given you? Because he's seen it all, man. Like Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest advice he gives me, like I say, is when he say not to be afraid of failing. Like don't be afraid to fail. You right. know what I mean? And um that's that everybody's afraid of failing, you know what I mean? Like, but it's like, you know, the, the, a lot of the geniuses and the brave, the people of the Kanye's and a lot of them right. motherfuckers, like, they weren't afraid to fail, you know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. why they're as big as they are. Pause, yeah. you know. So, um, I think that's a great, great advice. Like, 
you know. So that's one of the things that he's taught me. But he's he drops so much gems on a daily basis that it's like it's just so much, you know. Yeah. It, it's crazy that you're you're from Massachusetts, obviously. I don't know how heavy the Boston's like dialect is in Worcester, but you don't have the Ka Sta Tom fucking Brady fucking shit going on. In your area, is it like does the white trash sound like Ted? Well, yeah, my my <laughs> assistant, he sounds just like fucking Ted. Oh, he does. Okay. Yeah, Marty. <laughs> my, uh, Marty sounds just like fucking Ted. He's like the epitome of like Boston. Like he sounds like straight ball, like Mark Wahlberg. Yes, he sounds just like Mark Wahlberg when he talks. So. That's great. Yeah, was it like uh, shout out to Mark Wahlberg by the mm-hmm. way, who uh, obviously is a fucking legend. Yo, you got to get him out of rap retirement. It's another bro. one, bro. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, he's not doing that shit. He, Mark Wahlberg is making movies, making money, he's living his best life. He's not trying to rap, but you know, he definitely is somebody that puts his arm around me. Pause. And you know, he he lets it be known that he's a huge fan. And that did he give you any of his Jordans yet? Because he's got those J's. I think he's got a couple pairs now. The green ones. Yeah, I'm, I haven't really raided his closet. Yeah, no, I'd be like, yo, fam, I need a tw- like, I need a twelve. You know? yeah. Pause. But I mean, I can see. I, I pause yeah, you before you pause. Go. I was see, about see to what get I did you. there. I'm on top of it, bro. I'm on top of the pauses for you. Pause. You're on top of it. It's Another crazy. pause. But I've never talked to him about shoes. Right. It's really just like, yo, what movies is popping right now? Right. What you got going on? Right. Yeah. What, what kind of slide? What kind? Pause. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We can't even talk. Yeah, we getting crazy. We get we getting crazy, but but um but yeah, so these people have become like, you know, mentors to me, you right. know what I'm saying? And um it's always dope when you um grow up watching somebody on T V or listening to somebody's music and then, you know, they become fans of you, you know? Same thing with Marshall, you know what I mean? It's just perfect example of somebody that or Will or Mark or, you know, whatever, like these people are actually fans of mine, you know, right. and it's like, um, it's just, it's just a, a surreal feeling. It's pretty dope. You know, you're somebody who That's, I gravitated towards because 508 was like tied together. It was like a, a body of work, like a concept album, if you will. And I felt like, uh, you know, in the last decade or so, we've kind of gotten away from like people really just being creative with albums you know i think like when i like college dropout was like there was a theme throughout that whole album the skits mm. tied it all together mm. is there anybody who's like creativeness that is in hip-hop that you just kind of like recognize and you're like yo i see what you're doing like that shit's dope whether it's a lyrically or visually or obviously someone who's came after you pause that was a good pause hey yo somebody where i'm like i have that i see what they're doing yeah Before me, after me, like yo, J Cole, of course, a huge fan of J Cole. Yeah, J Cole, me and him have a really good friendship too. But J Cole is fire. Um, what about someone newer? Someone that's came after you? Pause. Mm, yeah. That's good. Um, Millie's is doing his thing right now. Shout out to my boy Millie's. Love Millie's. Millie's is out of Boston, where I'm from. Oh, I know. I met Millie's you know. in a hotel room at South by Southwest in yeah. 2013. Yeah, but I, but I. Anybody that's coming from where we come from, like, because it's really not. It's not a lot. No, it's not a lot, but it's also really, you know, you, there's not a lot to work with. You know what I mean? Because it's like, um, you know, this it's not really, it's not like you go to New York and there's like a whole bunch of opportunities there or like right. Hollywood or Atlanta, you know, it's like, there's really not a lot of opportunities where we're at. So it's like, we had to create those, you know what I mean? So for him to. You know, and he really like took the mm-hmm. stairs for real. Like he is not a new artist. He's not. He's been. He's been. He's been doing his shit for a minute. You know, and he's and he's fire too. Shout out to Bia who also didn't take the stairs. That's another one. Shout out to Bia. She didn't take the stairs, and I I knew Bia like for she a was long. when she was with Pharrell back in the day. Like I, Bia's been grinding twelve years. Yeah, like ten to twelve years. I've known Bia. You know, and she's definitely someone that you know. She came from where we come from, you know what I mean? And like I know her, know her, like right. seeing her being in a house together type shit. You know what I'm saying? She was get. I, it was Bia who actually put me on the Instagram. Really? She made the Instagram. She's like, you need to get this app. Bia made Instagram for me. But that's like 2010. 
That's like 2010. That was like 2010. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. I don't know. It was 2013. For, it wasn't right when Instagram oh, okay, started. Okay. She was telling me I needed to get on Instagram. And I, I was like anti-social media around like 2013, 14. I didn't care about it. I didn't want it. I'm like, yo, I, I'm outside passing CDs out. I'm doing it the dinosaur way. I'm right. like trying to hit the streets and shit, trying to go to colleges and do it. And she's like, nah, nigga, like social media is like where you need to be at. And she put, she, um. She had grabbed my. She made a um, Instagram. She taught me how to use it. You know. That's sick. Yeah. Um, but shout out to Bia. I know. I know you got to go in a sec. Uh, the first four albums that come to mind. Just your best top four albums ever. Without thinking about it too hard. Just what comes I to mean, mind. Nah, you got to. I mean, that's. Uh, that's. I mean, shit. Okay. Uh, get rich or die trying. Mm-hmm. Uh. Um, Marshall Mathers LP. Yep. Um, uh, uh, Miseducation, Lauren Hill. And um, I'm going through like a Rolodex in my head right now. It's, it's great three. Maybe a Kanye album? Yeah, I was just about to get to that. Um, my Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. That's a solid fucking four right there. Yeah. Well, listen, the album is out right now, man. It's it's. it's I, I, I think it's mm-hmm. the best album of the year, personally. For real? You're not just saying that? No. I promise you, when I first listened to it, I was like, yo, this this is like... Because I had Vultures as like my favorite shit of the year. Yeah. Because Vultures is fire. Shout out to Ty, shout who you've worked with. That's my bro. Yeah, so good to see him have a number one song. Shout out to my man, Ty. Um, sure. But I just think cohesively, just for... Like, I think your album's amazing, bro. It's, you, it's bro. fucking spectacular, front to back. Everyone should go check it out. Um... And uh, yeah, the Jelly Roll song is crazy. And we're working it to radio, which is a uh, it's, it's a great record, man. So for people, if you ever have dealt with addiction in your life, if you watch that video, you might cry. How do you? F- who's the guy who was the guy? That's that's. Um, is he a rapper? Homie. Everybody that's playing. I heard you say that. Yeah, I, he's a rapper, but he's somebody that is from the hometown. Of course he is. He looks like he's the from homie. Massachusetts. You know, right? he's I've known I've known him for over twenty years. Um, he fucking killed it. He did it a, a phenomenal job. Yeah, phenomenal job. And shout out to Mike. Shout out to Mike. He, they need to put him in the town part too. Shout out to Mike. <laughs> My guy, appreciate <laughs> you pulling up, brother. For sure. Join a Lucas. Respect. Boom. Want to shout out to Hardeen, man. Hey, don't forget this interview was brought to you by Hardeen. And when you're hitting Las Vegas, you got to stop off at Hardeen. Tell the Uber driver, the taxi driver, take me to Hardeen. They gonna take you. They gonna get you right. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you go visit him at uh, HardeenLasVegas.com. Go follow him, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. And when you go and check out the most craziest premium selection of cannabis in the world, um, make sure I saw you tell them I sent you. They're going to get you situated. Salute to Hardeen. Thank you for watching.